Hi, and welcome to lesson four here in our reactions unit. Lesson four is gonna deal with reaction stoichiometry. Does this diagram look familiar? It should. It's our mole map from our reactions unit. If this doesn't make any sense to you, it probably means that you need to go back and review our formula stoichiometry material from our reactions unit before we go in and start talking about reaction stoichiometry. Of course, if it makes perfect sense to you, you know you're in the right place and you're probably groaning a little bit as we move into the lesson, but it's really not that bad. Let's go in and take a look. The best way to think about chemical reactions is to think about them like recipes. A balanced chemical equation is going to represent a ratio between the substances that are involved. This is what we call the mole ratio. So for example, N2 plus 3H2 produces two molecules of NH3 or ammonia. This represents a ratio between these substances. For every molecule of nitrogen I need, I need three molecules of hydrogen and I will produce two molecules of ammonia. This also is a mole ratio. If I have one mole of N2 molecules and I react it with three moles of H2 molecules, I'll get two moles of NH3 molecules produced. Generally, we're going to be dealing with fractions of a mole. We're not going to be dealing with individual molecules because it's just not practical. But once we have the equation balanced, we can do all sorts of ratio-based math involving the equation. For instance, how many moles of nitrogen would be needed to produce 10 moles of ammonia? Do you think you can do this? Try it on your own, and then we'll go through it together. So in order to do this, I need to know the ratio between the nitrogen and the ammonia. From the equation, that ratio is 1 to 2. If I want to make 10 moles of ammonia, I'm going to need x moles of nitrogen. Now I can just cross multiply and divide in order to determine that I'll need 5 moles of nitrogen gas in order to produce 10 moles of ammonia, which makes perfect sense since they're in a 1 to 2 ratio nitrogen to ammonia. That's basically all that this is in terms of mole ratios. And so you're probably pretty psyched because you're like, wow, that's really easy and I can, I can totally do that. And yeah, if we just left it there, it would be really, really easy and that'd be the end of the conversation. But if you remember from last unit, moles can be converted into three different quantities of a substance. They can be converted into a mass of a substance, a number of particles, and the liters of any gas at STP. So we can actually move between these three different quantities of a substance in any balanced equation and determine the quantity of any other substance produced. It gets a little complicated, but it's really not that hard. Here's the flow chart that we'll use for this. If we have some substance A, we can go between its three molar quantities without a problem. And we have some substance B, we can also go between its three molar quantities without a problem. But in order to compare between A and B, we need to use the balanced mole ratio from the equation. So a lot of times we'll be starting with one substance in some quantity. We'll have to convert that into moles. We'll need to figure out the number of moles that are produced of another substance and then convert that back out into a final quantity, which probably sounds a little confusing, but I promise a little practice is gonna make it seem relatively easy. Here's the process that we're going to follow. You're gonna convert the given quantity to a mole amount. You're then gonna use the mole ratio to determine the target mole amount that you're looking for. And then you're gonna convert that target mole amount to the desired quantity. Let's try an example to see what we're talking about. This is on page 18 of our unit eight packet. Here's a reaction. I've given it to you in balanced form. How many grams of zinc chloride are produced from 20 grams of zinc? Pause the video and try it on your own. And then when you're ready, we'll go through it together. So to work through this, I'm going to go through the steps. The first thing I need to do is I need to convert the given quantity to an amount of moles. I'm given a quantity of 20 grams of zinc. In order to convert that to moles, I'm going to multiply that by a conversion factor with the molar mass of zinc on the bottom, 65.4 grams, and moles on the top. This winds up dividing 20 by 65.4. I get 0 0.306 moles. That's how many moles of zinc I have to start. Step two requires me to use that mole ratio to find the target mole amount. So in order to do that, I need to look at the mole ratio between zinc and zinc chloride, which is what I'm looking for. They're in a one-to-one -one relationship. I'm starting with 0 0.306 moles of zinc. That'll produce X moles of zinc chloride. Cross multiplying and dividing is going to tell me that it's 0 0.306 moles of zinc chloride produced. Once that's done, I can go to step three and convert the target mole amount to the desired quantity. I'm gonna take 0 0.306 moles of zinc chloride and I'm gonna convert that to mass by multiplying it by 136.4 grams, which is the gram formula mass of zinc chloride. That's gonna give me a final mass of 41.7 grams. That's how many grams of zinc chloride I should expect will be produced from 20 grams of zinc. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have before we move on. 
So generally speaking, I can give you quantities in any of the three molar amounts and expect you to determine quantities of any of the three molar amounts of whatever the target substance is that we're looking for. But there is a smart shortcut that you can do, but this only works if you're given and are looking for volumes of gases. Avogadro's hypothesis, equal volumes of gases have equal numbers of molecules at the same temperature and pressure, means that you can compare gas volumes directly. You can just use them as an analog for the mole ratio. Totally fine. Let's go in and look at an example of that. Given this reaction, how many liters of oxygen gas are needed to produce 10 liters of water? Pause the video, try it on your own, and then when you're ready, we'll go through it together. So looking at this equation, I've got 10 liters of water, and I wanna figure out how many liters of oxygen are produced. I can just look at the mole ratio directly. Oxygen and water are in a one to two relationship. I'm producing 10 liters of water, so I've solved for X liters of oxygen. It's five liters of oxygen. That is my final answer. I would expect that I would need five liters of oxygen to produce 10 liters of water. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, take a moment and write down any questions that you have before we wrap up. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of chemical equation stoichiometry. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can use the mole ratio of a balanced equation to determine the amount of moles needed or produced for any substance in the equation. Also make sure that you can use molar conversions to determine the mass, number of particles, or liters of a gas at STP needed and produced for any substance in any chemical equation. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them for me below the video and you can always get in touch with me. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.